Welcome back to Textile Tuesdays. In this video, I will be discussing slash proof materials. The paper I'm presenting is Development of an Advanced Personal Protection Equipment Fabric for Protection Against Slashes by Kanchi Goforth and M. The paper stated that in 2010, 32% of the weapons used in violent crimes in the UK were knives. So clearly there was a need for slash proof materials other than in the military and the police. The typical materials used for slash resistance are fiber, yarn, and fabric, including laminates. Our first example is Kevlar, which is defined as having at least 85% of the amide group linked to two aromatic rings. It is produced by polymerization of the long stiff molecules and it de decomposes above 430 degrees. Our second example is xylem or PBO. The five membered rings on the other side of the benzene ring give a stiffer chain molecule. It's produced by dry jet wet spinning from a phosphoric acidic solution. It degrades in warm and moist, moist conditions. Our third example is dyneema or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. It is produced by gel spinning a super drawing technique that uses dilute solution of ultra high molecular weight polymers such as polyethylene to unfold chains further. The fiber derived their strength from extremely long chains of polyethylene and they melt and deteriorate at 150 degrees. So as you can see here, here's our summary of the fibers mentioned. All of the fibers listed provide excellent strength to weight properties and a high modulus. Today, however, I'd like to specifically talk about Dyneema. Like I mentioned before, it is ultra high molecular, molecular weight polyethylene. It is 14 times stronger than steel, making it the strongest fiber in the world. So the Dyneema that we are most familiar with is actually called DCF or Dyneema Composite Fabric, which is a laminate fabric that comprises of a dyne Dyneema filament sandwiched by a film, a layer of film. As it becomes more and more popular, there'll be more and more applications to technical apparel design. In our first example, we see a tent. It has a Dyneema filament in the middle with polyester films and bonded with PSA adhesives. It has excellent tenacity, super light, and no water absorption. For, example, for our second example, we have a backpack. The Dyneema filament is sandwiched between a woven polyester face wrap to help it add color and sturdiness. It is waterproof, lightweight, and strong enough to carry heavy loads. In our third example, similar to bags and backpacks, woven polyester face fabrics are added to the Dyneema filament to add color and sturdiness. So using Dyneema in outdoor apparel is actually relatively new, but outdoor companies such as Westcomb uh, for example, have been using Dyneema in their jackets. And this is because it's super packable, light, and has exceptional strength to weight ratio. Finally, we have footwear, uh, such as performance cycling shoes, which are intended to be strong. So the Dyneema is typically bonded with materials that have a TPU film on it. Of course, these examples mentioned above are solely for a non-industrial or non-military use and only at um, a technical apparel design concept. This concludes our presentation and thank you